Japan's nuclear crisis is worsening and is now threatening public health. Last night, another explosion rocked the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. And within hours, radiation began spewing from the damaged reactors, and the number four reactor caught fire. The prime minister has warned people living within 19 miles of the plant to stay indoors or risk getting radiation sickness. Friday's earthquake and tsunami triggered three explosions at the plant and prompted fears of a possible meltdown. For more about the potential health risk, we are joined by Jonathan Links. He is the director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Public Health Preparedness. Professor, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. All right, first and foremost, how great of a threat is this to the public health now that radiation is indeed leaking from the plant? Well, this is now a much bigger threat than it was before this latest news. In fact, I would say the situation has changed dramatically. And so help us understand the risk here and possibly the worst case scenario as well. So there are four different reactors involved. Numbers one, two, and three were active reactors. Number four was not an active reactor, but it had spent fuel in it. That number four reactor is the one that's on fire and the fire is causing the release of radioactive materials because of the spent fuel that's now on fire. So what should people do? People in the immediate area, is this also getting into the atmosphere? This will, will this be carried to other places? Help us understand exactly what is happening and what should be done. Well, remember that the Japanese government already did a 12-mile evacuation around the power plant. The current recommendation at the 19 mile radius really only therefore affects those who are in the zone between 12 and 19 miles and it's very good advice for those folks to be sheltering in place it's basically too late to think about evacuating the problem with this though when it comes to radiation and correct me if i'm wrong you can't smell it you can't see it how do you know if you've come in contact with it Honestly, you don't know. We can't sense it with any of our five senses, and of course the exposure is involuntary as well. So what do you do then? I mean, we've seen pictures of people in protective suits going through decontamination. I mean, does that work? Is that enough? So the advice to shelter in place inside your home is very important advice because it's really the outdoor air that's going to be carrying the radioactive materials, and of course wind direction is going to be a very big factor in all of this. Uh, if the prevailing winds continue to blow out to sea, then actually there's going to be significantly less risk than if the winds are blowing in from the sea. But, you know, it, it's crazy to think this all could depend on the wind. What happens if the wind changes? And also, how far could this wind carry the radiation and how many other people could be exposed to it? Well, the wind could carry the radioactive materials quite some distance. However, as the wind carries the materials over a greater and greater distance, there's more and more dilution and diffusion of the radioactive materials so that anyone breathing outdoor air at a distance is actually breathing a much lower concentration than those who are breathing the air very close to the plant. Gotcha. What kind of lasting long-term damage uh, could people face by coming in contact with this, and especially those who live in and around the Daiichi plant? One of the things that makes ionizing radiation so scary is that it's a carcinogen. And unless you have a very, very large acute dose, cancer is, in fact, the health risk that we focus on. And we assume that in terms of cancer risk, there's no threshold, there's no minimum amount of exposure or dose needed. Any exposure increases your risk of getting cancer. The greater the exposure, the greater the increase in cancer risk. As we talk about all of this, work is underway right now to try to sustain those nuclear reactors there and, and prevent a, a meltdown, as many say could happen. Some of those workers there at the plant have been evacuated, but there are people still working at this hour. How much of a risk are they at? So they're, on the one hand, at an increased risk from external irradiation, so just the radioactivity that's surrounding them. They're actually being protected in terms of getting internally contaminated by wearing personal protective equipment. The suits you see them wearing, the respirators or self-contained breathing apparatus and so on. 
the good news is they can monitor the exposure they're receiving from the radioactivity surrounding them and limit their exposure as much as possible by not being in the highest exposure rate areas around the plant. All right, Jonathan Links, director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Public Health and Preparedness. Thanks so much for your information and insight. We really do appreciate it. Thank you.